Good morning and welcome to worship. Let's commence by singing, singing uh, or reading parts of Psalm 147. How good it is to sing praises to our Lord. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars and calls each one of them by name. Great is our God and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to God will on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes the grass go on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure, not in the, his pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of a man. The Lord delights in those who fear him and put their hope in his unfailing love. Let's pray. Loving God, we gather together this morning as your people, acknowledging you as our great God, the creator, the sustainer, and the lover of your creation. Lord, in this time, may we hear you speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As the United Church, we often follow the lectionary and I found all four lectionary readings quite valuable. So I'm going to ask Ben to come and read the other three as I've just read the Psalms. So I'll pass it over to Ben. Praise God and I uh, hope you're all having a wonderful Christmas season and getting ready for New Year's and uh, setting out some real positive New Year's resolutions and I hope you all stick to them. I'm getting into a bit of exercise this, this year, so hopefully i um, be able to stick to that. But uh, we're just glad that Russell's here to share with us today. Uh, as he mentioned, another three readings. Uh, the first one will be from Jeremiah 31, 10 to 14. Hear the word of the Lord, you nations. Proclaim it in distant coastlands. He who scatters Israel will gather them and will watch over his flocks like a shepherd. For the Lord will deliver Jacob and redeem them from the hand of those stronger than they. They will come out and shout for joy on the heights of Zion. They will rejoice in the bounty of the Lord, the grain, the new wine and the olive oil, the young of the flock and herds. They will be like well-watered gardens and they will sorrow no more. Then young women will dance and be glad, young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. I will satisfy the priests with abundance and my people will be filled with my bounty. And the next one is if, uh, John 1. Go to John. Uh, also 10 to 14. He was in the world and through the world was and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to, to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born of not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word become flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Powerful. Praise God. And the last one is Ephesians 1, 3 to 14. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glory, glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance 
with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he proposed in Christ to be put in effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were all chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him, who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ, when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promise of the Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing the, our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possessions to the praise of his glory. Amen. So they're the three scripture verses today. Um, he's got a, a big big shoes to fill to stand up to those three uh, scripture verses so we'll get him back and hear Russell's message, can't wait thanks Russell thanks Ben my wife has taken an avid interest in her heritage and she spent hours and hours and hours researching and finding out and she's gone back to about 1600 on her family and my family and, um, and as a result of that, one of the TV shows that she loves to watch is a show on SBS called Who Do You Think You Are? On that show, people trace their heritage or they, have, they find out a bit about their heritage. And it's amazing how someone will say, well, that explains why I have this uh, streak of determination in me because my great-grandmother did this and this and this. And often they attribute their, um, their own characteristics to those of their inheritance. The scriptures today, I believe, that we read tell us a little bit about who we are. Who we are. In Jeremiah, it says we are God's special people and he cares for us. In Psalm 147, it says he lifts the downtrodden. In John, it says he gives us the power to become children of God. And in Ephesians, it says we are blessed with every spiritual blessing. As we look past on 2021, we can look back to it with some mixed feelings. Last night, I watched uh, a TV summary of the year. And as I looked at it, for many, it seemed... A disappointing year. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't, as usual, a negative outlook was presented. But it wasn't just the TV that I watched last night. Uh, somebody said to me the other day, a person who's a strong woman, I came into 2021 feeling strong and ready to take on the world and now I feel empty. And for some reason it has not been an easy year. And I think added to that, there have been, um, there is a degree of negativity, I believe, amongst many churches which see that the West is declining in Christian faith. And maybe individually, you may feel insignificant against the forces that seem to determine our future. But can I just tell you that it's simply not true? You are not insignificant. And in these readings, I find that it tells me that I matter to God. So I'd like to pass that on to you, that you matter to God. And I don't want to ruin these readings by preaching ad nauseum, and uh, sometimes we can ruin scripture by thinking we can improve on it with a wonderful sermon. But today I just want to share a section of those scriptures and I want to hone in especially on the Ephesians reading. It's interesting, when Paul wrote that passage, he was so excited that in the original Greek, 
is one sentence. There is no full stop in that whole passage. <laughs> He's so excited he just can't stop writing and telling people about our riches in God. He outlines a number of things in the book of Ephesians. First of all, he outlines who we are. Who are you? Then he outlines what the purpose of the church is and the importance of the church. And then he says, reveals the mystery of God's plan for humanity. So who do you think you are? Can I say that first of all, you are loved. And I share with you Jeremiah 31 verse 8 and verse 9, where God speaks to his people and he says, See, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame. Expectant mothers and women in labour, a great throng will return. They will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble because I am Israel's father and Ephraim is my firstborn son. I am Israel's father, says God. He is your heavenly father who loves you and takes an interest in you and wants to redeem you. And in Psalm 147, verse 11, it reinforces that. It says, the, the Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. He delights in you. In John 1, we read these verses. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. Isn't that amazing? We are children of the living God. And I jump over to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, which is an amazing verse. It said, He predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. Did you hear those verses? We are children of God. He delights in us and he is our Father. Maybe you feel a bit alone, a bit unloved, a bit as if no one cares about you. Can I tell you that scripture tells us something quite different, that you are loved as a child of God and God is you in your, he your heavenly Father who delights in you. So the first thing out of this I find is that we are loved. The second thing is we are chosen. And again I reflect on the scripture. Psalm 147 verse 3 says this, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Jesus loves to fix things and he loves to get our brokenness, our woundedness and heal us. He has chosen us to be whole. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, it says this, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world, before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight. Beautiful verse, isn't it? Before the world began, God had chosen you. There's a song that goes, before the world began, you were on his mind. And every tear you cry is precious in his eyes because of his great love. He gave his only son. Everything was done so you would come. But not only has he chosen us, he's made us blameless and holy. I have to tell you that I don't feel very blameless at times and I don't feel very holy, but that's what I think. <laughs> when God looks at us through the lens of Jesus Christ, we are made whole and we are made blameless. Powerful words. And he goes on in Ephesians 1 verse 3, verse 7. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. 
We are chosen. We are redeemed. We are forgiven. We are blameless. We are holy. Before the world began, you were on his mind. So we are loved and we are chosen, but we're also blessed. In Jeremiah, oh sorry, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. How are we blessed? In Ephesians 1 8, it says this. He lavished on us with wisdom and understanding. We've been blessed with many things. But we've also been lavished with wisdom and understanding. God's wisdom, godly wisdom. Not what the world has, but what God speaks through you. And in Jeremiah, we see, receive this promise. For the Lord will ransom Jacob and redeem them from the hand of those stronger than they. They will come and shout for joy on the heights of Zion. They will rejoice in the bounty of the Lord, the grain, the new wine and the oil the young of the flocks and the herds. They will be like a well-watered garden and they will sorrow no more. Then maidens will dance and be glad, young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into gladness and I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. Isn't that a wonderful promise at the change of a year? I will turn their mourning into gladness. We are blessed in so many ways by Christ that he gives us his peace, his perfect peace that passes understanding. Not only are we blessed, but we're also empowered. In Ephesians 1 verse 13, we read this verse. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal of promise of the Holy Spirit, who is a deposit, guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. You know, everywhere I go now, I have to take a vaccination certificate to, to, to let me into a place. In other words, we need that uh, certification to gain entry. And what do we have? What has God promised us as a certification that we are his children? He's promised us his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit. We are marked in him with a seal of the promised Holy Spirit. So we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Empowered with godly wisdom. Wisdom that seems to the world foolish. God, uh, wisdom that seems to the world to be silly. And yet, it is powerful because it comes from God. So who do you think you are? <laughs> do you know who you are? You are God's child. You are holy and blameless through Christ. You are chosen by God before the beginning of time. You are redeemed. You are blessed. You are healed. You are whole. You are wise. And Paul not only talks about who we are, we talk about who we are as a community, as a church community. We are part of his body, the body of Christ. And God's mystery that's revealed is that in some time to bring all things, God will bring all things in heaven and earth under one head, Jesus Christ. God will bring all things under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And he will use you and use me as his children and as his church. Maybe you feel that as a Christian in today's society and as a church, you might feel insignificant, you might feel hopeless, you might feel weak, and you might feel that you're ineffective. Can I say, don't believe the lies. Don't believe the lies. In the early 90s, uh, the Ukraine 
was under military rule. And the military uh, offered to have democratic elections. And there was a man by the name of Viktor Yushchenko who ran for president. And uh, they saw him as a threat. In fact, the, uh, the military tried to poison him. And uh, fortunately, he survived that. But when the elections were held, Yushchenko won the election. But the military, when they had their press conference, told lies. They said, the uh, results of the election are in and the military has retained power. Yushchenko has been defeated. And that would have been the end of the story, except for one thing. There was a young girl named Nadia who was signing in the corner. So while on the big screen they were doing this, in one corner she is signing. And you know what she's saying? Don't believe the lies. Yushchenko has won the election. They're telling you lies. And people who were hearing impaired and saw this all of a sudden realised, so they got onto social media. A million people took to the streets and they had re-elections and Yushchenko won. You know, sometimes I, I marvel at the courage of that young woman. And I, I just marvel that she didn't know whether any of the military could sign read or not. <laughs> and while they're proclaiming that they are the victors, she is saying, don't believe the lies. You know, sometimes in the world we get caught up by the big screen, <laughs> by people who claim that they're victorious. But let's look at the small things in life. God says, don't believe the lies. The church is not in decline. I have used 12 men to turn over a world. There are more than that in the church today. Who do you think you are? You are a precious child of the living God who reigns now and through eternity. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Loving God, sometimes we need to be reminded just who we are. Who we are, and really, in many ways, we are insignificant. But that's who we are in ourselves. Lord, we need to look at who we are in you. For some reason, you decided to choose us. And I'm glad that you weren't that picky, that you chose people who had much more ability. But you chose us to be your children. You chose us to bless us with every blessing. You have empowered us with wisdom and with the Holy Spirit. So Lord, we ask that you would use us, use us in this year to be your instruments, to proclaim that the church is not just a, an, a, a whitewashed tomb, but it is a living organism with you as our head. So use us to work together, to understand who we are, to understand the people that we work with, and together in love to work under your headship. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, if you'd like to make some offering or donation to the um, Uniting Church in Atherton, please feel free to do so, uh, either through our bank account or through an ordinary donation. God bless you all. Amen. And now may God's blessing be with each and every one of you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, as you go about your daily life in this day and in the year ahead. Amen.